that I was weird. After high school, I, I, I had to make a choice. I really wanted to go to the university and learn sound and get into theater and production and this. But I knew a lot of people that were doing this, people that were in school with me and they, they um, finished before me. They were older and they finished and they came back. And they would tell us, oh, it's so difficult. We can't get work. We can't find jobs. Don't do it. Don't, don't come in this profession because you're just going to suffer. And my mom was working so hard. She was working. I mean, I never saw a woman work like my, She was such a good example for me because she just worked hard. And so I wanted to help her. And I wanted to do something where, because I'm still at home. I'm living at home. And I wanted to do something I can make money faster. So I don't want to go to school and leave her and my brother and I don't have money. She doesn't have money. You know, it's not a, was just not a good solution. So I was always very good with hair, with fixing hair, uh, because in, in my, my hobby and the, the, the rock music and this kind of thing, it was in the late part of 1980s. And in America, we, we had a big, uh, popular uh, fashion to have big, even the men, big hair, long, big, poofy, like a woman. The men looked like women in the USA for 10 years, really, I swear. They wore makeup and the big hair. I got very good at, at fixing the hair. So everyone's saying, do this. Go take your license, do be beautician. You make money and you're good at it. So I did. So this is what I did. I went to school and did that and um, went directly to working. And um, so I just, you know, this nothing terribly exciting. But I, I did that and I, um, well, no, one, one thing, I, I got into a, a special part of doing hair. Um, there's, there's something very popular here. It's called hair extension. It's where they add the hair to the woman to give her long long hair, they, they take some hair and they sew it or glue it and they make a long hair. Well, I learned to do this, but I did it for like a different purpose, not, not just to make long hair. I, I started helping the women that had cancer or they had some sickness and they lost, they lost their hair. So I got more into the replace, replacing, helping them, they want to grow their hair back after this sickness or they have some health problem. I, I, I like specialize in helping the women that had the difficulty, they can't grow their hair. So this was my thing and for years, this is what I did, was this, every, all, all the things, I did the nails and the toes, all, everything, but mostly my specialty was to help these women. I always, that was it. So um, anyway, but that's basically it, just for years, you know, 15 years, uh, that was my profession, was doing the hair. You have only your office or you are where? No, I work for other people. I always worked in other salons for, for different people. I had no, n I knew the word. I knew there was a, a word, Islam. I didn't have a clue. I had no knowledge. I didn't really watch TV that much. Um, I didn't have time. I didn't know anybody that was Muslim. I didn't know anything about it, good, bad, anything. Um, I was very, in a way, ignorant of the world, really, of the whole world. I didn't under, I knew there was a world, <laughs> and if something really bad was on the news, you know, I would see it. But as far as politics or, or uh, social things going on, I, I didn't know. I was just focused on go to work, take care of brother, the, 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 uh, even in high school. I didn't get into government or politics or these subjects. I, I pass the class, finish it, move on. I didn't have any concept. I didn't know anything about any religions, honestly, none. They didn't teach religion in, in, in my high school, none. They didn't teach it. So I didn't know, I just knew from what I was little. And then when I started working, this, this is what really started my whole thing with, with religion. When I would work and I would do these people's hair, a lot of these people were very sick or maybe they had cancer, they almost died, and then they, now they're okay. So I was talking to women that were very religious. They had strong belief and faith, and I was fascinated by that. I was like, why? I mean, 
I, sometimes I would have to, you know, cover my mouth because I go, why? Why do you believe that? Why? Because I had no, no belief, really. I said, none. I didn't believe. I had none. I, I, I would get so scared sometimes because I wouldn't understand, like, how, how, how can I just not be here? How do I die? I didn't understand that whole concept of how I can die. And I would get very scared. I would get like a panic. And I would give myself like a heart attack because I would be so afraid. It just stops? What do you mean it just stops? I just stop? I just am not there anymore? I mean, really, it was very terrifying to me when I was young. And um, so I started really searching and asking every person, any, any woman that came in my chair, if she, I would ask, are you religious? Do you have a, do you believe in anything? <laughs> why? And then I would ask them why. And they were like, what do you mean? Why? Why? I mean, were you born that way? Did your family raise you this way? Did something happen to you? And all of a sudden you had a moment and you believe now. Why? Why are you like that? And all of most, except for one woman in all the years, only one woman had an experience that made her have her belief. Everybody else was born this way. And so I felt like, you know what, I'm, it's never going to happen for me. I'm going to give up because I wasn't born into, nobody taught me when I was little. And I felt like a big, this was a big problem. And the first woman I worked for, for years, five years I worked for one woman, she was Native American. And they have a whole different, you know, idea, the spirituality. It's not like the big religions. It's very different. Um, Similar in a lot of ways, but it's a different idea. And I was so jealous of her because she was so at peace with her life and the world. And she just had such solid belief. And, and I was like, how do you get that? I, I want that. I want to feel like that. I want my children to feel like that. I want, I want this life. I want it. And so, like I said, I would ask everybody and I would go. They would invite me. Oh, come to my church. Come here. I went to every group, every church, every religious science, but I never met anyone who was Muslim, ever. So I didn't even know about it. And nobody ever talked about it. That was the other interesting thing. I never heard a bad word about it either. I never heard any word about it. So I didn't know anything. So then years, life passes, and I'm still searching and going, and I um, was divorced. I was married for f 10 years, and uh, in anyway, the long story, same man, almost 15 years. When we were divorcing, I had filed for divorce, but I was still in the house, but I... Uh, one of my girlfriends invited me to start playing this game on this website on the internet because I wouldn't leave the house. And I was, you know, big, ugly. It was not, not a good time. So uh, finally, after months of her insisting, oh, come on, you sit in that house. You can't sit there forever. Just, you know, come on, the, play with me in the night. At least it's something you can do and introduce you to friends, whatever. And um, anyway, so... Um, <sighs> The, the way that I found out about Islam is I met the man I'm married to now. And we met on this website that my girlfriend insisted that I join. And we met on there and we started talking. And during the first few days of our conversations, he asked me, did I know what was Islam? And I said, no, I had no idea. So he sent me a website. In English and this website it was uh, Islam I'm gonna remember which one it was Islam way I believe it was Islam way and it had all these articles <coughs> and all of these you know links and things and the one that caught my eye though was something about and I still have it in my computer something about um, how to be a good husband or the way to be the best husband or something about being a husband. And I thought, oh, I got to see this, you know, come on, you know, I got to see this. So I click on it and I'm reading it and I'm like, whoa, really? And then I thought, nah, there's no way. There's no way that people, men are being taught this, that uh-uh, there's no way, there's no way. So I'm like laughing, right? And so I copied it and I email it to him and I said, have you read this? <laughs> and so next time we talk, I asked, did you get my email? He says, yes. I said, did you read it? Yeah. And I said, come on, th this is a joke. And he goes, no. He goes, we must. And I went, what? What do you mean we must? We must. We have to be like that. I was like, 
ah, you're full of it. You know, I was just, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a year now trying to get divorced. And I'm like, from, you know, this horrible situation, I'm like, there's no way there's, a, I'm in America. There's no man alive that's like this. Oh, come on. No, we must. We have to. What do you mean you have to? Why? You have to why? What's going to happen? You know, I, I have no clue. So that started it. And then I just started going and all on my, you know, on my own and learning and, and, and researching and everything I read. I just kept going, no, really? Really? Come on. You know, peep, there's nobody like this. 